Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents... Fast Man. any sleep? No, not all the time. Just every once in a while he carries on like that. That's why he insists on sleeping down here. He's afraid it'll disturb the rest of the house. Can you ever understand what he's saying? No, it's just a lot of double talk. Gee whiz. It sure sounds funny though, doesn't it? You don't like him, do you? Oh, sure, he's all right. He's kind of stuffy. I like to pull his leg sometimes. What's your trouble? You're always pulling people's legs. Sometimes they don't like it. Well, that's when I like to do it. Oh, He's an all right guy. No. <laughs> Listen to that guy, will you? What's the matter with him, anyway? Can't you ever pick out the words? No, it's just a lot of gibberish. Let's take a look at him. Jerry, shut that door. I'm surprised at you, Jerry. You know Henry wouldn't like that. I'm sorry, Mother. You should be. You know why Henry sleeps down here. Yes, Mother. I mean, what's the matter with him, Mrs. Elliot? I mean, Mrs. Lord. Nothing's wrong with him, Joe. Oh, Joe, your mother just telephoned. She wants you to go home. Okay. She was very sweet. She said she thought Henry was such an attractive man. She said everybody thought so. It was very nice of her. I must tell him about it later. Say, Mother, couldn't I have the car for just an hour this afternoon? Henry said no, Jerry. Oh, Mother. You always used to let me have it on Sunday afternoons. We had an awful lot of fun taking rides in the country. Well, we'd still have fun, darling. But if Henry said no, I'm afraid that's final. You'd better run on home, Joe. Okay, Miss Elliot. Oh, I mean, Lord. She has to keep saying his name all the time, doesn't she? Yeah, he makes me sick. Hey, Joe, I got an idea. I'm going to have some fun with him when he wakes up. No kidding. I'm going to pretend he said something terrible while he was talking in his sleep. Are you nuts? No, no, no kidding. Don't you think it'll be a laugh? Well, you're just suing him because he wouldn't let you have the car. No, no kidding. I think it'll be funny. I'd like to see his face. Then, of course, I'll tell him it's just a guy. Okay. But someday you're going to get into trouble. Well, I'll see you. Yeah, see you. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. How's the boy? Hello, Mr. Lord. Hey, I told you to call me Henry. What's the matter, Jerry? I asked you a question. What's the matter? Now, what does that mean, shaking your head like that? I asked you what the matter was, and I expect an answer. Come on, Jerry, what is it? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. It's all right, Mr. Lord. What's all right? Have you been here long? Was I talking in my sleep? Yes. Well? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone what I heard. I, I didn't mean to listen, Henry, but I won't repeat it. You can trust me. No one will ever know. What did but... you hear? What did I say? Huh? You said I could trust you, that you wouldn't give me away. What the devil are you talking about? What did you hear me say? I, I, I don't know. You don't know? Don't give me that. You know perfectly well what it is you heard me say. I mean, go! I'll tell my mother. I wouldn't do that. Why not? Because I don't want you to. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to go for you like that. Just, just put it down to nerves. I, but you mustn't be afraid of me. You aren't, I'm sure. Just tell me what it is you heard me say in there. I didn't hear you say anything. Oh, come now, Jerry. No, really, I didn't hear you say anything. It was just a gag. I don't think I understand. Well, I, I was mad at you, I guess, because you wouldn't let me have the car this afternoon. So I thought it would be funny to pretend I heard you say something terrible. You're lying. No, sir. 
You're very quick, Jerry. I've heard you talk your way out of trouble before, like last night when you were an hour late getting home. Mr. Lord, I'm not trying to talk my way out of anything. I'm telling you the truth. It was just a gag. You expect me to believe that? Yes. Well, I don't. And it upsets me very much that you should take this attitude. After all, Jerry, I love your mother. And I am married to her. We're all in this together. Now, what did you hear me say? Nothing. All right. All right. If that's the way you want it to be. Can I go now? That's a foolish question. Where are you going? I'm, I'm going down to my workshop. I want to finish a model of a ship I've been doing. Oh, yes, yes. Your mother was telling me about that. Uh, I must uh, come down there sometime and take a look at it. Oh, um, here. What's this for? To spend. What do you think? Take your pal Joe Murphy to the movies tonight. But it's, it's ten dollars. All right, all right. So buy yourself a bag of popcorn. Oh, and Jerry, if you really want to use the car this afternoon, take it for an hour, but only for an hour. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Lord. Henry. Henry? should be a good crisp. Just thin enough. Thank heavens I had those jars of blueberries. Blueberry pie is Henry's favorite. Mother, you don't know much about Mr. Lord, do you? You, you met him on a cruise. You never saw his family or anything, did you? Jerry, are you jealous of Henry? Mother. Why, Jerry, I'm disappointed. I thought you were too intelligent for that. I'm sorry. You should be. I'm really amazed at you, Jerry. I don't care. I'm scared of him. He jumped all over me in the living room because I, I just kidded him about talking in his sleep. You what? Well, it, it was just a gag. Jerry, you know he's sensitive about it. He's trying desperately to get over it. And yet you deliberately teased him about it? Well, what did he get so scared of? What's he trying to hide? I'll bet you anything he's been in jail. Jerry, don't you ever say a thing like that again or think it. Well, suppose I'm right. Well, you're not. Jerry, this, this is dreadful. I... Darling, listen to me. Try to understand. I've been very lonely since your father died. Oh, you've been a great comfort to me, but that's not quite enough. Then I met Henry and we fell in love with each other. From now on, my happiness depends on both of you. All right. Oh, darling. Well, anything the matter, Louise? No, no, nothing in the world. See, blueberry pie. Oh, something's happened to upset you. Has Jerry been talking to you? I suppose he has, Jerry, and I have lots of heart-to-heart -heart talks. <laughs> I guess I'm jealous. That's funny. I just accused him of being jealous. Why? Did he say anything against me, Louise? You mustn't believe him. You mustn't listen to him if he did. He doesn't like me, I'm afraid. Oh, darling. Of course he does. He, he just has to get used to you. He's a very emotional boy. He's always been emotional and imaginative. Yes, I know, I know. This will all pass. Meanwhile, you're the only thing in this world that matters to me. I feel that way, too. You know, maybe I shouldn't, but I, I feel like a very young girl. I could never question you or doubt you. What's that? Jerry. It sounded like Jerry. He was, he just went down to his workshop. What? Are you all right? The, the step gave way. Yeah, let me take a look. Oh, darling, we'll get you upstairs and call a doctor. What happened to it, Henry? Like, well, I guess it tore loose. Well, we just had them repaired. It tore loose just the same. You'd almost think someone planned it that way.
Who, who's there? Who is it? Who, who is it? Joe? just a moment, friends, we'll see the second act of this evening's suspense story. But right now, during this brief intermission, I... Say, what's going on here? What happened? What is this, anyway? Uh-oh, there's Danny the Dip, and it looks like he's leaving with the loot. Looks like this is one time that crime might pay. Ah, but he won't get far, because Clancy the Cop is right on the job. There goes Danny. And there goes Clancy. Huh. Not going anywhere. Dead battery. <laughs> well, you know, friends, someone should tell him that one of the major causes of battery failure is extreme loss of water, and that can mean a dry, dead battery just like Officer Clancy's. But there's an answer to that problem, and here it is. It's the famous Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Now, let me show you why. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles. Otherwise, they'll get together and short-circuit the cells. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stayful battery. In the Stayful battery, every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place. You see, there's the fiberglass the feature that gives a real advantage to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, whereas the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stay Full battery doesn't need all that extra space. So we can take the extra space and use it to advantage by putting it up above the plates. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, enough in each one to cover the plates completely, there's space left for extra water. But you see, an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water, whereas the Autolite Stay Full battery with that extra space above the plates holds over three times as much water. That gives you over three times the liquid protection of ordinary batteries. And that's why you have to add water to your Autolite Stay Full battery only three times a year in normal car use. Oh, and say, friends, here's another fact that I told Officer Clancy. In recent tests conducted according to the life cycle standards of the Society of Automotive Engineers, the Autolite Stay Full battery was found to give 70% longer average life than batteries without Stay Full features. Yes, sir, it's a fact. So, why don't you take my advice and enjoy the extra assurance of an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Well, we had a new dependable Autolite Stay Full battery rushed over to Officer Clancy's car, and it wasn't long before he was off in fast pursuit. Yes, sir, he caught up to the robber, and Danny that dip was in a real dilemma. I want to tell you that Danny learned a lesson he'll never forget. You're always right with Autolite. And now, the second act of Suspense. How are you feeling, boy? Oh, okay. How's the ankle? It, it, it's still pretty sore. I, I thought you were Joe. So I gathered. Why did you send for Joe at this hour of the night? I, I, w I wanted to tell him something. Couldn't it wait until morning? No. Look, Jerry. Whatever it is you have on your mind. For heaven's uh, sake, Jerry, aren't you in bed yet? What's the matter with you? Why aren't you undressed? And what is all this nonsense about Joe's coming over to see you? I, I, I want to tell him something. But darling, he's gone to the movies and it's past ten o'clock. Jerry must have something extremely important to tell him. I do, I do. He's the only one who believes me. You won't believe me because you're in love with him. But Joe will believe me. Believe what? Yes, tell us, Jerry. That, that you tried to kill me. Henry tried to kill you? How did he try to kill you? By fixing that solar step. It wasn't broken. And why would I want to kill you? Because you think I know something about you that happened before you met my mother. Why, you hysterical fool! Henry, I'm 
Let me handle this. I understand, Jerry, better than you do. Please, darling. I know what I'm doing. All right. All right. Jerry, have you any idea what you've just been saying? Accusing Henry of trying to kill you? He did, he did, and he'll try it again. Why, Jerry, this is dreadful. It's perfectly dreadful to think that you'd do a thing like this to us. Mother, I'm not doing anything. It's him that's done something. I don't know what, but it's something terrible. Murder, no doubt. He tried to kill me. Jerry, if you say that once again, I don't know what I'll do. I, I just don't know what I'll do. It's true. Honest, you've got to believe me. I'm not safe anymore. Maybe you aren't either. Don't it? Jerry! Hey, Jerry! Come on up, Joe. Oh, the cellar door was open, Mrs. Lloyd, so I came in that way. Hi, Jerry. Hey, that must have been some fall you took. Mom said you wanted to see me. He does, Joe. He has something very interesting to tell you. He thinks his stepfather tried to kill him. Huh? It's true. He'll believe me, won't you, Joe? You know that gag I pulled on him, pretending I heard him say something in his sleep? Well, he believed it. He's scared of me, Joe. He wants to kill me and make it look like an accident. Oh, you're kidding. Don't... Don't you believe me either? You must be kidding. Maybe you're delirious. Joe, has, has Jerry ever said anything against his stepfather? He's been jealous of him, hasn't he? Oh, I, no, Mrs. Lord. Jerry always said he was an all right guy. There's no other explanation. All right, Joe. You'd better go home now. Thank you for coming, but Jerry has to go to bed. Okay. Joe! Won't you believe me? Won't anyone believe me? Oh, you'll feel better in the morning, Jerry. No fooling. Well, good night. Jerry. Darling, what can I do? What can I say to, to convince you that this is all your imagination? Mother, look, this much we know. He's touchy about talking in his sleep, isn't he? Why? What does he think he might say? Why, nothing of any importance, I'm sure. He must have some reason for having these terrible nightmares. I think if we listened hard enough, we might find out. What do you mean? Tonight, after he's asleep, will you listen with me? Will you do this one thing for me, Mother? Will you? Yes. I think. Oh, Mother. Mother, what are you going to do? Well, go there tomorrow. See what I can find out. There's nothing else to do. Clark, is Joe Murphy there? Yes, his mother told me he was. Well, can I speak to him? It's important. It's terribly important. Joe, it's for you. Sounds like Jerry Elliott. Oh, thanks, Mr. Clark. What's the matter, Jerry? But I told you I can't come over today. Isn't your mother back yet? No, Joe, she's not. And I'm scared to stay here alone. I don't care who knows it. Uh, 
Joe. Come on over. I can, I tell you. And you're crazy to be scared of your stepfather, Jerry. Well, he was in here just now and bought me a Coke. What do you mean, what was he doing here? Hey, Mr. Clark. Yes? What was Mr. Lord doing in here? Who wants to know, Jerry? Yeah. Tell him he must have rats in his cellar. His stepfather was in here to get some rat poison. Oh, he just bought some rat poison. Poison? Hello, Jerry. Mr. Lord, I, I didn't hear you come in. I came in the back way. The mother hasn't returned as yet, has she? No, no, Mr. Lord. Come into the living room. You and I are going to have a little talk. I, I, I... I said come into the living room. You know where your mother went? No, no, Mr. Lord. I think you're lying, Jerry, but never mind. Come on over here and sit down. I made us some coffee. I, I, I don't want... I said come over here. I can make you listen to me if I have to. Joe, Joe is coming over any minute, Mr. Lord. That's another one of your lies, Jerry. I saw Joe at the drugstore and he said he had to go home. Now, here. Drink your coffee. I won't. You will do as I say, Jerry. That's the trouble with you. You've been spoiled since your father died. You need a man around the house. You will do as I say. I know all about you, Mr. Lord. I wasn't lying. I know all about you. You've been in jail. What are you trying to do to me? You were listening again last night. You're determined to make trouble for me. But you're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> stay here. I'll go. I said stay here. Got my key. Oh, I think I'll be able to forgive you. There we are. That's it. You look tired. I am. Where were you this afternoon? You went out of here without saying a word about where you were going. You shouldn't keep secrets from me, Louise. Don't you ever keep secrets from anyone, Henry? What do you mean? Where's Jerry? He was here a few minutes ago. What do you mean, don't I keep secrets? I want Jerry to be here. Jerry! Jerry! Mother! Oh, Mother, I thought you'd never come. You got here just in time. He tried to kill me again. What, you... Don't touch him, Henry. I want to hear this. Go on. He tried to kill you. Yes. He put poison in this cup of coffee. He tried to make me drink it. Then you rang the doorbell. I was going to throw it away, but I stopped just in time. You wouldn't believe me before, but now I can prove it. Let me have it. Don't let him take it away from you. He's the boy is out of his mind. You're not going to listen to it. What do you want me to do, Jerry? T to take it to the drugstore. Have it analyzed. Oh, go on, Mother. Go on. You know he did it. You know he's been in jail. You went to Marwell to find out. Wait. Yes, Henry. I, I went to Marwell to find out. Why didn't you ever tell me you'd served a term in prison? I, I was afraid to. I was afraid of hurting something wonderful. It all happened years ago. It could never happen again. Go on. Well, I... I had a chance to make a fortune. Or so I thought. So I took some money that didn't belong to me. Instead of getting it back, I... I lost it. Well, after I got out of prison, I wandered around for years until I found you. Then I thought everything would be all right for me. I hadn't counted on him. Now do you believe he tried to kill me? 
No. Whatever Henry may have done, I know he's not a murderer. I guess I'll have to prove it to you, Jerry. Mother! Jerry, now you know there wasn't any poison in that cup. And it, are you convinced that it was your imagination after all? And the fall down the cellar steps. That was an accident too, wasn't it, Jerry? Yes. I guess it was. As for you, no more secrets. No. No more secrets. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. story for next week will be The Ledge, starring Dick Foran. Also, be sure to listen to Suspense each Thursday night on your radio. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.